you. Congratulations uh, on the figures that you produced this morning. Thank you. So older drugs performing very well. My question really is, how do you keep the momentum going and will the newer drugs help you do that? So uh, it's a good question. So first and foremost, I mean, as you said, we had a uh, continued performance of our uh, uh, specialty drugs, I mean, in particular in multiple sclerosis and rare disease, and our vaccine business is doing pretty well. And emerging market in general, to take geographic stand, has also been uh, steady at uh, close to 7% growth, which I think is one of the best, uh, you know, uh, performances in the, in the industry. Now, uh, there are some new launches we are expecting, and one key is uh, our drug called Dupixent. It's the first biologic uh, made available for uh, atopic dermatitis. And uh, we started with a very strong start, which is 26 million euro of sales, still low, of course, because it's just two months. But, uh, you know, uh, looking forward, we think that it could be a very significant driver and a blockbuster in our, uh, in our sector. OK, let's stay with the old and we'll talk more about the new in a moment. Um, were you surprised that the older drugs have done as well as they had been? I, I, last time we spoke, last time I looked at your numbers, there was an expectation that we would start to see a roll down in some of these therapies. Why hasn't that happened in the way that maybe was anticipated by, by maybe you and the analyst community? So I think one, one thing is what we anticipate and hopefully internally we try to anticipate well. Now, it's clear that there is one which is really declining and continue to decline, which is our diabetes cells, more competition, loss of exp expiry or exclusivity. So altogether, we are declining. There's the good news is that with a good performance, or slightly better than what we thought, and we compensate for that. And this is where, where we are today. I and mean, the life in, uh, in the uh, pharma industry is to uh, have new drugs compensating for your uh, loss of exclusivity and your uh, drugs which are getting public. And it's exactly what is happening. So altogether, in this environment, we speak less about diabetes. Looking forward, we speak more about the rest. And this is the good news, I believe. Talking about the new drugs, I noticed one of the uh, potential blockbusters that we've been talking about, DupixNet, um, the eczema drug. $37,000 a year is the price on that. And I'm just wondering, do you get any pushback? Because that's like the equivalent of an Audi A4 every year for a drug that cures kind of dry, itchy skin. So actually, if, first of all, I mean, this is really a drug which is going to be used for patients who are suffering from severe uh, atopic dermatitis and on which other drugs do not work. Uh, and second, uh, not only we didn't get any pushback, but when you have seen that in the US, we had some uh, good comment from some key payers, uh, such as uh, Express Script as an example. So, I mean, we got very early access for the commercial lives, and we are rolling out our plan for further access the price may look high, but if you compare to other uh, biologics uh, being used in other uh, dermic diseases like psoriasis, it's even below the price of these, uh, these drugs. So I think it's a, good, it, it's a good price. It's a fair price. It has been recognized also by all uh, you know, external bodies who tend to evaluate the value brought to, by new drugs, and in particular high here in the US. So altogether, we made right. a lot well, of effort to price it well. And I think that's been well received. I mean, it's more than $3,000 a month, which I think is probably higher than the average salary um, in the United States of America. Do you get concerned about <laughs> um, the, the, the possibility of Congress uh, taking so many millions of people off of health insurance? Because no one could really, I mean, very few people could actually afford that price for, for this eczema drug. So, so, so you really need to think, I mean, it, it probably is more than two minutes to discuss the, uh, the U.S. Uh, healthcare system. Uh, I, I mean, this price, which is a list price, is not the actual price which is paid by, by the uh, insurances of the patients. And then, as you know, I mean, in the U.S., you have patients who benefit from uh, public programs which help them to have a lower price. And we have our own patient support program which are here to help patients we cannot afford to pay for it to uh, just still have access to this drug. So altogether, not taking too much into the details, I think the pricing is in line with what you could expect, even somewhat uh, uh, lower than some would have expected. I think Spot tried, 
we are negotiating rebates with uh, with uh, PBMs and uh, and uh, base as we speak. And uh, once again, I mean, for patients who cannot access because of price, I mean, we, we will have some special programs. So altogether, I think it's well. Uh, it fits well in the uh, environment where we are in the U.S. in terms of pricing for such a differentiated drug. Can we talk a little bit about M&A? Um, um, I, I noticed uh, in the statement this morning uh, that the company said that you guys aren't in a hurry to do M&A. You, you paid, what was it, $750 million? Let me just check my notes. $750 million uh, earlier this year, protein sciences business, uh, which is the, the, a vaccine maker. What would it take to spark more M&A, not only for Sanofi, but more broadly in the sector? And are you surprised there isn't more M&A taking place right now? I, I, I think that, uh, I mean, that's a good question. As far as we are concerned, as we said, I mean, we are trying always to be uh, disciplined and to uh, do M&A when it fits with strategy. So financial discipline and strategy leads to a limited number of potential acquisitions. I think more broadly, I mean, the price of assets are pretty high. This is very, this industry, like a sector, like many others. So you need to be high, to pay high attention on the price you pay for acquisitions. And of course, depending upon the synergies you can generate, upon, uh, you know, uh, what, are the, uh, what are the other opportunities, you just evaluate M&A in line with that. As far as we are concerned, uh, again, I mean, we are continuing to look at what could make sense in our strategy. Our results for Q2 shows that M&A is not core to this strategy, but we are looking at what can uh, just enhance our uh, position and our small acquisition in vaccine is, uh, is part of that.